In this series of videos, we're going to look at how we set up conditions to do quantitative analyses. In part one, we're going to look at how to declare which elements we want to analyse, what spectrometers and crystals we want to use to analyse them, and what con column conditions we want to use. First, some general notes about probe pre-PMA. Everything is stored, everything you measure, so the calibrations, peak and or bias scans, the raw counts, it's also all stored together in a single MDB database. This gives you easy archiving of the data, meaning you just store one MDB database, and it means you can easily transfer a whole data set for offline processing. Since PFE is free to download and install, everyone can have a copy of the software to process their own data offline on their own computer. Before we start, you need to know what analysis conditions you want to use. So that includes which elements, the spectrometers and crystals you want to do, what accelerating voltage, beam, current and count times you want to use, and also which standards you're going to use to calibrate your data. So to get started, let's launch Probe Free PMA. If you're just going to do offline processing, you can select no and not interface to the hardware. But we want to do some actual acquisition of data, so we're going to select yes. A tip of the day window may appear. This gives some helpful tips, but you can turn these off by deselecting this show tips at startup box. First of all, we're going to open a new database. You'll then be given the opportunity for putting in some descriptive data. Now, as I said earlier, we need to know what conditions and elements we want to analyze. So I've got a set of conditions here uh, that I've predefined for um, carrying out some um, analyses of some iron, copper, nickel sulfides. These are the spectrometers that I have available. So I'm going to put sulfur on spectrometer 2 with a PET L, iron and nickel on spectrometer 3 with a LIF L, and then copper on spectrometer 4 with a LIF H. And I've so chosen these three standards to use to do that calibration. So to load the standards we're going to use, we go up to standard, add remove standards to and from the run. Here we have a fairly short list because we haven't declared very many standards yet. Well, we want to use the iron metal, uh, then control click, the nickel sulphide and the copper metal. Or you can add these one by one. So say we wanted to do the iron, you can either click add to the run or double click. Just double click to add them all. And we've now added which stands we want to use. The next thing we do is we click on acquire and this is where we set the conditions we want to use. We start off by doing a new sample setup. We're going to do an unknown type of sample. And the sample name is uh, what type of sample you want to analyze. So we're looking at sulfides in this example. So we're called sulfides. And you'll see in the bottom list here that it's already got the standards shown that we've already pre-declared. You don't necessarily have to do this before you start, but it helps. The next thing we want to do is we want to say which elements we want to analyse. So we click on elements on cations. To put the elements in, you go to this list of channel uh, element x-ray box and you select the first empty box. You can either choose it from the drop-down list or you can just type in the element name. And we want to do the K-alpha x-ray and we're going to be putting this on spectrometer 3 and it pre-selects that it's going to be on a LIF L. We're going to accept the background and peak conditions uh, as default and we're going to do just a simple off-peak uh, background type. We'll go through the other options in another video but we'll just choose the defaults for now. Select the next row, put in nickel, again that's going to be on spectrometer 3 Copper, and this one's going to go on spectrometer 4. And 
then finally sulfur and this is going to go on to spectrometer 2. Now we're analysing all of the elements so we put all the elements in our list and they're all going to be analysed. If for example we were doing uh, oxides for silicates and we, would, we wanted to be able to measure the oxygen by stoichiometry but we didn't actually want to acquire oxygen you'd still need to add it to the list and the way you do that is we put in oxygen you scroll down the x-ray list and select no x-ray line or you can just click that it's specified rather than analysed and it'll add it to the list as a non-analysed element. But we're going to be measuring all our elements so we can uh, delete oxygen from the list. So we click OK. It then tells us the default standards were loaded for the samples uh, based on the highest concentration of element in the standards. If you did want to change which standards have been assigned for which element, you can click on the standard assignments and this brings up your list of elements and the standards are given by number but if you hover over them uh, a box comes up telling you which number is associated with which standard. So 103 is the iron metal which is correct for iron, 102 is the nickel sulphide which we're using for nickel and sulphur and then 100 is the copper metal which we're using for the copper so those are all correct. We'll look at uh, this box again in a, in a later video. The next thing we want to do is we want to see which column conditions we want to use. Now the default here uh, is 15 kV, uh, 20 nanops with a 1 micron spot. But since the x-ray line for copper, iron and nickel K-alpha is quite high, about 8 kV, 15 is a little bit low. So we want to increase that to 25. Alternatively, you can read the, the column conditions on your instrument and that will put those values in but we're going to force it to 25 kV. Make sure that you've got analog spot selected uh, if you want to do spot analyses. Now when we click OK, you'll see that the, the window here is saying that it's set in the operating conditions and what it's actually doing is it's setting those conditions on the column. So we wait a little while for that to set up. And that's the column is now ready to do the analyses. The other thing we want to do is we want to check the count times. The default here is that it's going to do 10 seconds on peak uh, and 5 seconds each on the peak and background. But if we look we want to set it for 60 and 10 seconds. So in order to change uh, you can either select an individual one and uh, change it to 60, 10 and 10 and that'll change it for that one or you can select on the grey bar and do it for the, uh, do it for all of them. Just type in again and it'll force them all to change. Down here you get a pictographic representation of what your analysis time is doing. So you've got your five spectrometers, we're only using two, three and four and the total analysis time is going to take about three minutes. Now as we can see we've got a bit of wasted time on spectrometers 2 and 4 so we could actually increase the count time uh, for the sulphur and the copper. You'll notice there's a bit of a gap between the iron and the nickel and this is because the software is accounting for the move time required to move from the iron to the nickel peak. Here you'll see that the iron is going to be analysed before the nickel but in our configuration setup we've got it that the nickel would be analysed before the iron. If we do want to change the order that the elements are analysed in, we can go to the acquisition options. Now at the moment the order is set just the order that we put the elements in when we declared our element setups. But if we go down to here to the user defined order, we then have the option to change which order elements go in. So for example if we did want to do the nickel before the iron, we click on the order number for nickel and we change that from 2 to 1 and we change the iron from 1 to 2 and we see now that the order has been reversed. 
Now, the reason you might want to do this is, for example, if you had another element on the same spectrometer as sulphur and you were worried that sulphur was going to change during the analysis time because it's volatile or sensitive to the beam and you wanted to force that to be first, you can use this user-defined order number to force that order. And that's the completion of this part of the video. In part two, we're going to go through peaking the spectrometers and choosing background positions.